Okay, so before we talked about the overview of the exam, now we're going to talk specifically about GED mathematics. For the mathematics section, this is a section that gives a lot of students trouble sometimes, but we're going to go in-depth, don't worry, when we get further on into the course. I assume you've already watched the overall motivation video that precedes this. If not, please watch that video at this time. Okay, the GED Mathematics has a number of resources and materials. Besides this course, there are a number of official and uh, other authorized materials in relation to the GED Mathematics test. There's the GED app on the GED website at GED.com. I'd recommend checking that out. They have a lot of free resources, absolutely free that you can utilize. They have about 10 questions for each of the domains we're going to be speaking about in a minute or two. There's also GED Ready, which is $6 per test. You can get all four of them for each of the uh, sections of the GED. This is the other sections as well. I'd strongly recommend that. In the course of preparing myself for this course, I made sure to purchase and examine that myself, and they have some questions that are very similar to the actual exam. And again, GED Ready is by the people who make the GED, and it's on GED.com. I don't have any association with them. I don't get any monies from them, etc. But I would strongly recommend that if you want to get an idea without going and taking the GED test, am I ready for this particular exam. And it costs six dollars, which I think is very reasonable. GED Flash, which is fifteen dollars for each subject for 30 days. It has some step-by-step -step answers. So if you have problems with a particular section, you may want to pick this up. What I find for most people is people really only have problems with one, maybe two sections at the most. Sometimes, though, this can vary. You may want to look into that. Uh, if financial resources are not a problem, this is, great, you know, this is a great resource. You may also want to check some of the following resources. Kaplan has a book that a lot of GED students really like. REA has a prep book. Test Prep Books has a prep book. McGraw-Hill, and there's other textbook or workbook publishers you may want to check out. They're available on Amazon.com. They usually cost no more than $30 each, generally around $20 to $25 for one of those books. The Kaplan one is especially popular with GED students. I'd also recommend some websites if you want some practice. Purple Math, P-U-R-P-L-E-M-A-T-H.com is a really good website with a lot of math practice problems written by mathematics instructors. Math is fun, M A T H I S F U N, mathisfun.com, another site written by math instructors with a lot of really fun problems. Okay, here's an overview of the actual test. It's called the Mathematical Reasoning Test. It's 115 minutes, that's about two hours. It's two parts. The first part, a calculator cannot be used. The second part, an on-screen calculator can be used. That means it's on the computer. When you're taking the computer adaptive exam on the computer, there's an on-screen calculator, kind of like if you have a laptop or desktop computer. When you go in the lower left-hand portion and type calculator, the calculator that comes up, it's kind of like that, except a little simpler. It has several question types, multiple choice. That's the regular sort. Drag and drop, fill in the blank, hot spot, and drop down. Fill in the blank is like it sounds. Hot spot means you pick a uh, you you pick what you're filling out on a particular diagram. This is mostly on the graph questions. So they would have uh, a negative. Let's say the answer was something like negative one, negative one. You'd look at the graph. You'd go over two dots and down a dot, and you'd pick that particular dot. Drop down is when you click on a drop down menu, like on a website, and select the uh, the proper answer. Okay, there's four main topics or domains. Each has objectives, and many of these overlap. 
okay? When I say many overlap, I mean some of these problems build on each other, so some of the graphs and functions may also involve basic math, geometry, algebra, or some combination thereof. A lot of the graphs problems are not simply graphs and will have additional materials involved from one of the other domains. So while I'm teaching it, I will stick to a specific domain, but bear in mind on the actual exam, a lot of times some of these questions will mix and match a little bit. Okay, in basic math, there are 10 skills that are going to be tested. Fractions and decimals multiples and factors, simplifying exponents, the distance between numbers on a number line, and whole numbers, fractions, and decimal problems. Okay, also squares, square roots, cubes, and cube roots, and other powers. Undefined expressions, uh, like 5 over 0, square root of negative numbers. We're not going to go into this much, and this doesn't have a lot on the exam, but basically all you need to know is if something's divided by 0, that doesn't happen. You can't do that. That's called undefined, and that's going to give you the undefined answer. If you take a square root of a negative number, it's going to give you undefined. Basically, it's bad, and the answer will be undefined if you wind up with one of those things. You should always check your work if you get one of those answers to make sure that it's actually undefined. Unit rates, that's miles per hour, dividing a box or a case. These are a lot of word problems, will involve unit rates. Objects at scale, these are ratios. Multiple step problems that use ratios, proportions, and percents. Okay, these will use several of these things I've mentioned previous in this domain. Okay, the next domain is going to be geometry. There's nine skills. The side lengths of shapes when given the area or perimeter. You have to work in reverse. The area and perimeter of 2D shapes. The area, circumference, radius, and diameter of a circle. That's a bunch of ge geometry involving circles. The previous area and perimeter of 2D shapes was mostly involving squares and rectangles. The Pythagorean theorem, this is trigonometry, this involves triangles. The volume and surface area of 3D shapes, that's three dimensions, that's in real life, something you can touch. Two dimensions is like animation, it's flat. Graphical data involving graphs tables, and more. Things like a stock chart. And like I said, with graphical data, a lot of times they can involve different things. So this graph would be, these are the types of graphs that involve geometry. And again, geometry are shapes. The mean, median, mode, and range. These are things with averages and such. Counting techniques. Probability of an event. Probability is the chance something is going to happen. Counting techniques, we'll get into it a little later. It means something a little different in math than it does in real life, but it has to do with, it overlaps somewhat with probability. Okay, basic algebra is the next domain. This gives people problems sometimes. This is the X and Y and Z and all that sort of thing. Okay, so for basic algebra, we have add, subtract, multiply and factor linear equations, evaluate algebraic expressions, creating algebraic expressions. That means given a word problem, you're able to say, okay, x plus x plus 5 equals 10, or whatever the case may be. Add, subtract, multiply, divide, and factor polynomials. We'll get into what a polynomial is later, but for now, just bear in mind the terms. Create polynomials from written descriptions. These are pro word problems with polynomials. Add, subtract, multiply, and divide rational expressions. They're similar to basic operations with polynomials. Rational expressions differ slightly from them. Write an expression from a written description. These are word problems. 
use linear equations to solve real world problems. Again, these are kind of word problems dealing with algebra. Solve a system of two linear equations. This is a way of solving problems using two equations. Solve inequalities and graph the answer on a number line. Quadratic equations with one variable. Complete the square or various other methods. It looks hard, but once we get into it, it really isn't. A lot of algebra is used in geometry. Okay, graphs and functions are the fourth and final domain on the GED mathematics test. To do this, you need to locate points and graph equations. Know the slope of a line from a graph equation or table. The proportional relationships for equations and graphs. The features of graphs and tables for linear and nonlinear relationships. Figuring out the slope given the, a point on the line. You're going to have to use an equation to figure out the equation of a line from two points. Utilize the slope of a line. Show a function in two different ways. Utilize functions in tables and graphs. Evaluate functions. Okay, regarding the formulas, you need to be able to use the formulas and know them, but you don't have to memorize all of them. You will be given formula access on the exam. You still really need to know the formulas. The test skews heavily algebra, trigonometry, which is the triangles in geometry, and graphs. Okay, I'm going to talk a little about problem sets. Math isn't like a lot of other subjects. The way you learn math is by practicing math. What we're going over is going to show you the basics of how to do a problem. But there are many intricate details that cannot accurately be covered in a single lesson. And you'll learn them by doing problem sets. You need to work through a math workbook or problem sets to understand it. Watching the slides is not enough. You need to put in the effort. This course is just the beginning. The GED questions are harder than example problems. And really only the reinforcement questions I put in occasionally are even close. Okay, it's like fitness. You may know that you need to get in shape, but unless you get on that treadmill, it's not doing anything. Parsing irrelevant information. The GED will provide you with irrelevant information often. You need to figure what is being asked and what matters. This is especially important in word problems. No specific content knowledge is often necessary. So they may talk about rockets and aeroplanes and all sorts of fantastical nonsense. It doesn't matter. You don't need to know a thing about it. You just need to figure out what are the important numbers how can I create an equation? How can I create a problem that I can solve with this? And then you solve it. Look at the answer choices. Do not be intimidated. Jot down important info. A lot of people are reluctant when they're doing math problems to actually write stuff down. Write things down. If you try and do things in your head, a lot of times you're going to get it wrong. So don't. Okay. Making sense of word problems. Word problems are a huge part of the modern GED. If you tried to take the GED years ago, you may be shocked at how much word problems play a major part in this exam. There's some keywords I want you to bear in mind. More than, less than, is. Okay? If we said 10, 10 more than 5 people or whatever the case may be, you got to add them. So it's 10 plus 5. If I said 5 less than 7 people were involved, 7 minus 5, you have to subtract. you got to look for these keywords. Is usually means equals. There's inequalities. There's certain words. When they give you a budget, it's usually an inequality. you got to break it down. Okay? you got to look at these things and break it down. Tear apart the word problem. Turn it into numbers. We're going to refer to it in some more depth later, but that's it for now.